Hello everyone, welcome to Hypervillainy TV. I'm your host, Hypervillainy, and today we're going to be talking about airbrushing. So first off, I just want to say that this isn't really going to focus a lot on fine art airbrushing, but this is really just going to focus mainly on building model kits, prototypes, custom action figures. So that's kind of the thing. Like a lot of those skills do carry over, but it's not really going to be, it's not going to focus on. So with that, let's uh, jump in. So chances are you already know what an airbrush is, but really, you know, what is it? To, to put it very basically, it's, uh, it's a tool where compressed air goes through and atomizes whatever paint you're using, sprays it out so then you can get sort of a smooth finish. Uh, you can also use this to get like gradient effects, cool like shading effects, really nice even coats as well. Um, you know, if you're doing like a base coat on something, then just, uh, airbrushing it on it's it's thinner so you're not losing the details in the process I mean basically you can use it for artwork you can use it for uh, model building um, there's really no end to what an airbrush can do so that brings me to another point I know that it's a little weird that I'm talking about airbrushing something that's really expensive to get started in um, when previously I was kind of saying hey you don't need to spend a lot of money when you're first starting out but really that approach still kind of applies to how I feel about airbrushing. I think airbrush, an airbrush is a great tool. I think you can achieve really great effects with it, but I also don't think it's required. I think it's something that, you know, if you're interested in, you should get in right on the entry level. Don't worry about buying expensive things. I, I'm going to basically show you things that you can afford, things that like I think will get you started, will get you in a great space, and give you a good idea of what to expect with airbrushing in the future. And if you want to upgrade those tools from there, I, I, would, I would highly suggest doing that, you know, but only after you've kind of gotten used to it. I, I feel like it's best to start off cheaper rather than expensive, because if you don't like it, well, you know, you, you didn't really invest too much into it. So the first thing that you need to get started in airbrushing is, well, an airbrush. Uh, I know, very uh, obvious there. You know, there's a lot of different kinds of airbrushes out there. Many people will tell you to buy an Iwata airbrush, uh, specifically like a Micron or an Eclipse or like any of those other types of Iwata airbrushes. You know, those are incredible airbrushes and you're not gonna go wrong with that. But those are also very expensive, usually within the hundreds of dollars range. Um, there's also another subset of people that say to go for the master airbrushes, which I will provide a link for those. Um, I personally have never tried any of the master airbrushes and they seem very hit or miss. So I'd rather uh, you go with my option, my choice, which is Neo by, by, or for Iwata, not by Iwata, the Neo for Iwata. Uh, this is specifically the CN model. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, I, I love this airbrush. I absolutely love it. I picked it up for maybe $60. As of this video, I think it's going for $66 on Amazon, but, um, you know, it, it always ends up on sale. If you go to Michael's with a coupon, I'm sure you could probably do even better than that. A lot of, I mean, you can get this thing for, for pretty cheap, to be honest, um, but I think this is a, a really excellent airbrush. I've been using it. I have no desire to necessarily upgrade to um, a quote-unquote better airbrush just because um, it's it's really awesome. Um, it's also a dual action, uh, which is which is uh, kind of important. So yeah, so this is an excellent excellent airbrush. You're also going to need some way of connecting it to uh, your air source, uh, generally an air compressor. Um, this is a ho this is a master airbrush hose. It's pretty nice woven and fabric and has a neat little pattern on it. By the way, you'll need like uh, some sort of like one eighth adapter, I think. Yeah, one eighth to like one fourth adapter that leads to your connections. Um, also, you'll need um, an air source of some sort for the airbrush. The air compressor that I have though is not one that I'm gonna suggest to you because this air compressor is like, I think 20, maybe 25 years old. I didn't get it when it was brand new. I actually got this for Christmas when I was a teenager. This is, um, it's like a Badger Cyclone. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's the model, yeah, it's from Badger Airbrush Company. It's the Model 82. Uh, and I think they call it like the Cyclone or the Typhoon or something like that. But the one I will suggest for you, the Makita air compressor, you can score that on Amazon as well. I also have a link for that below. 
it's really great. It's just a hardware store air compressor. This is kind of one of those things that like, I feel like you don't really learn until you get deep into airbrushing, but you don't need an air compressor that's specifically designed for airbrushing. Like that, it, it doesn't serve you at all. You don't need a specific Iwata air, uh, air compressor. You don't need a Badger air compressor. You just need a air compressor or an air compressor. Just any air compressor that you can connect and that you can regulate the airflow to is a good idea. I also suggest on top of getting that kind of air compressor, uh, getting a second uh, regulator that you can hook up to it. The air compressor itself should have a regulator. This one didn't come with a regulator, so that's why I attached that one on. But as you see, it's uh, it has like a little dial and it has a little air gauge on here. Uh, this one also has um, a water trap, which is very important if you live in a place with um, a lot of humidity. I live in California, so you know, there's a little bit of humidity, but truth be told, I have never seen this thing fill up with water. If you're interested in, in getting this specific one, it's really dirt cheap. You'll also want to get like some, some uh, uh, Teflon tape for those connectors. Uh, basically Teflon tape, it's not really like a tape tape. It's, it's more for um, sealing off valves uh, or connections, I guess I should say. By the way, I'm not a plumber, so I don't really know uh, the correct terminolo terminology for a lot of that stuff. So you're gonna have to bear with me on that. So one thing I also wanna talk about is safety. Um, I'm not gonna be using gloves today. That's kind of a bad on my part. I don't have any more gloves left and I don't really feel like running to the hardware store today to go and, to go and buying any. I use acrylic paints that generally, if some of those paints get into my bloodstream, which they will if you're using your bare hands, um, I'm not gonna die, but I still think it's a good idea to use gloves whenever you can. Even more so than that, having a respirator is incredibly important. Those particles, when they're floating in the air, if they get into your lungs, they're gonna do a lot of damage. So yeah, I highly suggest getting a respirator for a lot of the things that you do, but specifically airbrushing. So the next thing that you're gonna need, paints. This is the brand that I like to use, uh, the Golden Acrylic brand paints. I love these paints. So on top of uh, specific paints, you're gonna also wanna get basically like just uh, mediums and varnishes. Um, right here, I actually have airbrush medium. This is incredibly useful for thinning down your paints. Um, you can just use water. Um, but at a certain point, like the paints kind of break and the acrylic binder is too watered down and it doesn't really want to um, adhere properly. So using airbrush medium first for thinning down and then just kind of supplementing that with a little bit of water uh, usually does the trick. It's basically like a combination of like a very fluid acrylic binder and, um, you know, just some different additives to make, uh, to improve the flow of, of of the paint through the airbrush. You know, I also have a couple of other uh, other additives. I have Flow Aid here. It does help prevent some clogging. I also have matte varnish and, glo and gloss varnish. Uh, these are incredibly uh, useful for when you're finishing off a project, you know, getting like a good, like durable top coat on there. Um, if you want satin, you just mix a 50-50 mix of both of these and you get satin. These are actually Liquitex because at the time I couldn't buy Golden Brand, but you know what? These are about the same. They do about the same and they'll mix uh, well with the Golden stuff. On top of having your paints, you're also gonna wanna have your parts uh, for, for painting. Uh, you're gonna need to prepare these before you get started with uh, paint. Otherwise, you're gonna have difficulties with um, adhesion of the paint. You wanna make sure that you prep them well. And I actually have these right here. As you'll notice, these, these are all of my pieces, but they're actually covered by plastic wrap. This is for a very specific reason. My apartment is dusty, and I knew that these would be sitting for a bit, so I wanted to uh, put this cling wrap on here so then I don't experience any issues with dust getting on these pieces because dust is gonna just ruin your day. You'll see that these are all, like most of them are gray. Basically what I do to prepare a piece is um, when I'm first working on it, I, I wash it with dish soap. You know, after that, you're gonna wanna prime them 
and for me, I just like to use just a rattle can primer. Um, this is the Rust-Oleum Stops Rust Automobile Primer. I'll provide a link for this down below. So I should also mention that when spraying primer, I'm not gonna actually spray it here because uh, I go outside to do this, um, and that's why these parts are already primed. But when you're priming, you just, you wanna make sure that you give your primer a really good shape. I don't know, I would say like this is maybe this might be a little too far. You could probably go a little closer, but you know, you don't want to be like this. You want to be like, you know, maybe like, I think that might be like eight or nine inches. Um, you might even want to go a little closer than that, but like, you don't want to be like this. Don't spray like this. You know, I think some people say like about six to seven inches, but like, you know, you just want to give like, like a decent distance and just do, just start with light coats, just sweeping light coats. And then, you know, then you can move a little heavier, but not much, like just very careful, just light coats until it's covered. You want this to cure for about 24 hours, I'd say. You should also plan on having like mixing cups and, uh, you know, stir, stir sticks of various uh, types. So that's pretty much all you need really to get started. I mean, obviously other people will have uh, their own opinions on that. Feel free to comment below um, with your uh, objections, but, yeah, that's pretty much all you need. So I guess without further ado, we'll get uh, started on painting. All right, so now we're gonna get started. Um, first of all, I do wanna go over a couple of things that I didn't really talk about. Uh, first of all, it's this cleaning apparatus thing. I'll have a link to it below, but uh, really cheap, really awesome, really great. Um, here are my pieces right here for uh, that are all ready to go to paint. And uh, I guess I'm just uh, doing a little bit of a blessing, <laughs> making sure that uh, my area is good to go. Um, I also have water and 99% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, those you can just get at the grocery store. And then I have a power strip for turning on my air compressor because my air compressor doesn't have an on off button. That's how old it is. All right, so I'm just gonna struggle to get my respirator on and then we'll get started. So first off, I'm just gonna uh, get some black paint ready. As I said before, I use golden fluid acrylics and I'm just uh, using carbon black. So just gonna put a little bit in there and then use a little bit of airbrush medium to get that going. I start off with a 50-50 mix and just kind of mix it together. And if I need it a little thinner, I might mix a little bit of water, uh, sometimes a drop or two of alcohol, but you don't really need a lot just doing a quick spray. Also a good idea to have like some test surfaces that you can just sort of do a little spray on, make sure that uh, the airbrush is flowing and that everything's good, nothing's clogging up. Here I'm spraying the pieces. You'll notice that I just kind of start off by doing light coats, spray a little bit, let it dry, spray a little bit more, let it dry again. I'm also kind of going through and spraying everything that I know needs a black base coat. Here I am just kind of spraying off to the side. Like I said, it's always good to just kind of check and make sure that your airbrush is working. And then here I'm doing a piece. This just kind of gives you an idea of how I do it. I just go very light sweeping motions back and forth, try to get good coverage on everything. I know that it looks like I'm a little closer than what I am, but I'm really not. So here I pulled out the, uh, the hair dryer just to kind of kick up the drying of the paint. I can get a little impatient, and uh, I know that acrylics already dry super fast, but a hair dryer really helps with this. Make sure to keep it really low and really cool. You don't want to blast this on high, otherwise the paint will start to bubble. All right, that piece is good. All right, so now it's time to get everything else going. Um, so I'm actually gonna mix a dark green color here. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna mix Hansa Yellow Medium and a little bit of black to get that green. I know normally you, would mi you might mix uh, a, a blue of some sort, like phthalo blue with the yellow, but when you mix in a little bit of black with yellow, you actually get kind of more of a forest green, uh, a kind of like a warmer green, and this is actually what I want for this particular base coat. I want a dark, still kind of warmer green. So there, I actually have a little bit too much yellow. 
I'm actually gonna darken it and desaturate it a bit by using some of that phthalo blue. But only a little bit. I mainly want the effect from the black. There we go, that, that gets exactly the color that I want. All right. So now I'm just gonna kinda clear out my airbrush a little bit, get a little bit of black out just by uh, spraying some water and isopropyl alcohol through it. This, this usually does the trick to clear it out, but I am going to show you how to um, switch between colors a little bit later. So I added a little bit of water just to thin it down a little bit more, but I did add some airbrush medium to it, so it's already pretty thin. Sorry for uh, this shot getting out of focus, sometimes that happens. It's kind of hard to prepare for that when you're actually doing the filming. Uh, I, I don't really have a monitor on hand, otherwise I, I'd probably do a little bit of a better job keeping this uh, sort of in frame. So sorry about that, guys. I'm also using that dark green as a base coat for certain parts, just because I, I figure it'll get a really interesting effect. Um, with these, I'm actually uh, using that sort of foresty green, and then I'm gonna go over top of that with my very cool, almost emerald green, and then a, a, a very cool highlight, or a highlight of a, of a very warm, uh, almost kind of lime green. Uh, maybe a little bit darker than lime, but it has a really cool effect in the end. And, and that's kind of what I'm going for. You sort of want to vary the shades with your colors, just so then you get these, these interesting color effects. So it's like you might do like a more yellow green on top of a cooler, deeper green, or, or even vice versa. Do like a warm green that's dark, but then do like a cooler, brighter, more emerald green on top. And that's how you really get, get these very cool, like varying shades. All right, so now I'm gonna mix up that light green I was talking about. So this one I'm going straight with Hansa Yellow Medium and then doing the phthalo blue instead of the black. And this is important because, like I said, this gives you kind of more of an emerald green. Uh, think of like Green Lantern or like the Green Power Ranger kind of green. Not, not like a foresty tree green. And there you can kind of see. When it comes out very light like that, very misty, it actually almost even looks a little minty. So <laughs> that's, that's pretty much the effect that I want to go for. I'm just adding some water and a little bit of alcohol just so that I can really finely disperse. And there we go. I really just want to go on and, and do a very light mist coat with this. Going as light as I can. I really don't want to go too overboard with this. Especially since it's a little bit more of a highlight, it's definitely a lot brighter than my base coat green, so I just want to go a little more conservatively as I go. And here's sort of the finished result. I know I didn't show the varnishing, uh, but I did that after I sort of did the dry brushing and uh, uh, the, the wash uh, uh, for the details. Um, but this kind of gives you an idea of kind of the effect that I, I was going for and what and, and what ended up working and, and really making this piece come out. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to do a quick color change. Basically, I just kind of rinse that with either water or isopropyl alcohol. And then I just take a paper towel and just really just get it in there to just dig it out. This gets most of the paint out just right away. And I just kind of repeat that process as I go, just as many times as I need. All right, so coming up, you're gonna see me do what's called a backfill. Basically, you just place your finger right over top of, the, of where the, the needle cap is, and you just kind of gently press back on the trigger. Uh, that causes bubbles to sort of go through and just really clear out that, that needle packing area. You want to try to do that with either a little bit of water or isopropyl alcohol. And you got to be very careful because you really just want like the tiniest bit in there. Uh, that way you, you don't have it shoot up in your face. Here you can see that I'm uh, just cleaning out that, that little cup that, that's attached to the airbrush. 
Um, for the Neo, it actually just screws on, and I'm just kind of being a little extra anal here. Um, I, I think it looks really nice in chrome, and I want to keep it looking that way, so I'm just taking off some of the dried paint that's been on there for a bit, just because it was sort of bothering me. So now I'm going to show you a full breakdown of, of cleaning an airbrush. This is kind of what you should do every time you finish painting a piece. Uh, so I'm starting by, by cleaning off that back cap. So I just unscrewed it, took it off, and now I'm just kind of cleaning the outside of it. Uh, not, no, no paint really goes in there, so you don't really have to worry too much about it. Now I'm taking off the crown cap, or at least I thought I was going to take off the crown cap, I guess not. Um, I'm actually, oh, I guess I am. Okay, so taking off that crown cap, taking off that, oh, uh, well, I guess not. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. Oh, there we go. I don't know, I'm talking throughout this whole process because I didn't know whether I'd do a narration or not, so I apologize in advance for that. But yeah, so I take off that, that crown cap as well, just lightly dab the tip. You want to, you really don't want to break the tip on the needle. It's very important. So now I'm taking, uh, unscrewing the backpacking and taking out the needle. Uh, I know that you're seeing this in fast motion, but you really want to be careful when you take out the needle, do it super slow. And then you're just going to wipe off the needle. Just go from bottom to tip, bottom to tip. You don't want to go up and down, up and down. Otherwise, you're going to stab yourself or bend the needle. Both are really bad. Now I'm just going to wipe out some of the areas like the reservoir just to make sure that it's really clean. Adding some isopropyl alcohol in there uh, and letting it drip out a bit while cleaning it. Um, that way it just kind of flows through. Um, that also helps me to determine whether there's a clog or not that I may need to use uh, like dental tools or something to, to clean out. You shouldn't really, if you, if you catch this early enough, um, you should really be fine. But, you know, it always helps to do that. You'll also notice that the trigger came out there. There's a little notch in, in front uh, that tells you which direction it's supposed to go. The notch uh, faces forward. It's right underneath the trigger. So, um, you know, just make sure that when you put the trigger back, clean it very, or put it back very carefully. That way uh, the needle can go through there. And I'm actually cleaning out that trigger area uh, just in case some paint dripped back there. I use I used some red paint and uh, it was pretty intense. It got throughout most of my airbrush, so I just wanted to make sure to clean out every crevice where I thought it might be. And you'll see that Q-tips getting kind of dirty. Um, that's another thing. Also have Q-tips around so then you can clean your airbrush um, at, at, at any moment's notice. Uh, like if you get tip dry, putting a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on the Q-tip really helps. Uh, you know, you put it on the Q-tip and then you just sort of uh, pull back the trigger with the air compressor off and just gently scrub the, the tip of, of the airbrush. That way you can clean off all the alcohol. You also noticed I put back the, uh, the needle very, very carefully. You want to do that very slowly. I screwed back the, the back cap on. I'm cleaning those crown pieces just to get all the paint off. I'm just wiping it down with a paper towel with a little bit of alcohol on there. You don't really need a whole lot. Like you don't need to like submerge this in alcohol. When you screw back on, make sure that you pull back the trigger. Uh, that way the needle doesn't get bent in the process of putting the crown back on. All right, there we go. Just gonna screw back on the cup, attach it back to the air compressor. And then what, what I did was I actually turned on the air compressor and I'm just running some alcohol through it. I just really wanna make sure that it's all clean and doing a bit of a backfill again, just to make sure. I'm just gonna spray it out. Usually you wanna spray it into your actual uh, cleaner thing, your cleaner stand thingy that I'm linking below. But um, this works really, really good to just sort of see what, what's coming out. I wanna see whether there's a paint color coming out when I spray, and it's looking very clear to me. So I think I'm just kind of doing this just to be extra cautious. Now I'm gonna spray it into the cleaning thing.
Like I said, that red paint really got into that airbrush, so I just was making extra sure that I was clearing it out before I decided to hang it up for the day. All right, it's all clean. Good to go. All right, so thanks everyone for uh, checking out the video. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too bad and hopefully I didn't make too many mistakes. This is kind of my first time putting this on, uh, on video. So uh, anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments uh, what you think. If you have any tips or suggestions, like definitely put those there too because you know, be always good to, to learn some new things in the process as well. But anyways, uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, see you next week.